thumbs up back there when y'all are ready, please. Good afternoon. I'm Forsyth County District Attorney Jim O'Neill. Uh, yesterday, as most of you know, a student was charged at one of our high schools here with having a gun on educational property. It was just last week that we were all here um, with my crime fighters partners in crime fighting standing next to me and making it clear that we would not tolerate anyone assaulting a teacher. While the teacher was not assaulted in this case, nonetheless, we are drawing a clear line in sand. The overwhelming majority of students the South Forsyth County School System do what they're supposed to do. They go to school every day to learn and they behave and they treat their teachers with respect. There are a handful of course that don't want to follow the rules, they don't want to be respectful, and they are disruptive force in these schools. I have tremendous respect for our school superintendent. Patricia McManus is one of the hardest working people that I know. We have to figure out a way to identify those individuals that are being disruptive in the class and making it difficult for our kids to learn. As a father of three, we have children in public school, we have children in private school. I have been coaching high school lacrosse for more than 20 years, public school. I believe in the public school system, I support the public school system, I support our superintendent. But we have to figure out which kids are the disruptive forces just like we do in our society. I partner with Chief Penn. I partner with Sheriff Kimbrough on a weekly basis to identify those individuals that drive the crime rate in our community. And we aggressively go after them. We send them to jail to be sure that the rest of the community is safe and can live in peace. I believe this same model should be looked at in terms of how we are dealing with our school system. We have to identify the problem with children, separate them out, put them into a school where they can get the resources they need so that they can strive and improve, not just academically, but their behavior as well. And I believe if we look at a model like that and consider that, that the school system can also reflect what, what's going on in our society and how we, as crime fighters, deal with people that don't want to follow the rules. But I reiterate again my support for our superintendent. I work with her constantly, and I know how hard she works and how much she cares. And we're fortunate to have someone like that here. But we have to re-examine what's happening right now in our school system and figure out a way to be sure that we're doing everything in our powers to keep kids safe. And the ones that are not interested in learning and the ones that are not interested in behaving need to be isolated and resources poured into them to see if we can't change that behavior and that outlook. I'm going to turn it over to Sheriff Kimbrough. Appreciate that, Mr. O'Neill. You know, I, I really love seeing you all, but not as much as I've seen you all this week. You know, it kind of reminds me of uh, moving the field 
Murphy as well, all the um, guy kept experiencing the same thing. The difference in that is that that's a movement. The reality of it is we can't keep having these conversations because these incidents are death. These incidents are real. These incidents affect lives. You know, I've been thinking about this since yesterday. I, I sat at home on my porch last night, picked up a bad habit, smoked a cigar, and been trying to figure out what do I say? And I thought about it. I owe the people the truth. The people want and they expect truth from me. Here's what I'm going to tell you. If you go to the doctor, the doctor will diagnose what the issue is, and he will treat the issue. We've got to be real with ourselves in this community. We have a juvenile gun problem. Those are facts. Not just here, but across this country. Those are facts. Once you identify what the facts are, you diagnose what the problem is, then you begin fixing it. We've had this conversation since 2019. It's time for metal detectors in every school we have. I've said that since 19. We can't keep moving down this road. I'm a believer that God gives you the warning before he gives you the chastisement. We can't keep having warnings, finding guns and weapons and knives. We can't keep having these incidents in our school. We can't. Cannot. We have got to find funding. We've got to support the school system. Whatever they need to make this happen, we have got to do that. Because here's what I will tell you. While we got blessed and the heads of protection yesterday, we could all be crying today based on what happened yesterday. And we have to be honest about it. This happening across this country. All of you saw the news feed Monday morning where the guy was in church and pulled out a weapon and weapon, the weapon jammed as he was trying to shoot the pastor. You saw that. We are no different because we're in Forsyth County. We're no different. We have fights. We have violence in our schools. We do. Every day, every day, the school system needs our help in securing our schools. And those are facts. We've got to figure out a way to give them the funding, the resource, and I believe, and I have said it, and I believe that K through 12, from the front door to the back door to the side door to the playground, we need to make sure that our children, we need to make sure that our teachers are in a safe environment. Because here's what I will tell you. On my feed, I get emails, I get texts, people talking about how uncomfortable, how safe, how unsafe they're feeling. And what I want you to know is that I have no jurisdiction over the school system. I have a contract with the school system. I give whatever they provide, excuse me, I provide whatever they ask for. So we've got to figure out a way to get the funding to where we can secure our schools with more than one SRO. Anytime I send more than one SRO to a school, I'm pulling away from other resources. I'm pulling SRO uh, deputies off the street. I'm pulling units from discipline, things that they could be doing, things that they've been assigned to do. Anytime I pull a JIT unit to a school, this morning I pulled 10 people, eight, to a particular school. I'm not going to name the school because I don't want to single a school out. What I'm saying is that we have got to realize that we have an issue. We can't, we can't pretend that it don't exist. Anytime you pretend that a problem don't exist, it manifests. We have an issue. And I have an obligation to speak truth. I have that obligation. The facts, the numbers don't lie. I see the numbers every day. They provided me with numbers this morning. They don't lie. And just like in the movie, if this keep happening, we are going to have uh, an event that we do not want. All I'm saying to the community, all I'm saying to everybody, this is everybody's obligation to make sure that our schools are safe. It's public safety, as my chief would say. The public has to get involved. We've got to make sure that Ms. McManus has what she needs, the funding for metal detectors, the, the people are operating. If we have a contract with GoPro, the people that do the Wake Forest games, the people that cover the courthouse, we have got to make the sacrifice. Because people pay for what they want. A budget is just a representation of what you feel is important. And at what point do we feel that our schools 
need to be secured. The greatest asset that we have in this community is our children. Those are facts. And every parent deserves to feel that when their kid goes to school, that he or she is coming back unharmed, undamaged, unscarred, unblemished. We owe them to that. And because the taxpayers demanded me, demanded me to speak truth. They demanded me to speak it how I feel it. So what I'm asking you all is this. As a community, let's sit down and figure out how to get the funding. We know how to do it. We know how to secure the school. But it's going to take money to make sure you have them in all of our schools. Because you can't say that, well, it ain't happening at this part of the school, so we don't need them. No, it has to be systematic. If one school has them, all schools should have them. Those are facts. We can no longer move like this. If we move like this, that's when we move into a danger zone. My hope and my prayers every day, every day I pray the same prayer. Lord, please let us have a safe day. Let every child go home safe. Every child. We're coming into the months of the summer. We're coming into the, the warmer days. First thing this morning, we're dealing with situations at school. You can no longer move like this. We're flirting with danger. And we've got to prevent it. I'll yield my time to my chief, Chief Penn. This is not where I wanted to be today. But here we go again, standing before you, talking about an incident in school that doesn't include homework assignments, field day, test scores, quizzes. As you all know, I'm local, so I'm a proud product of Winston-Salem South Carolina Schools. So I want to let it be known that I stand with the school system and my partners in crime fighting the DA's office, Jim O'Neill, and Sheriff Kimbrough, and keeping our schools safe, not only for our students, but for our community. So as I'm standing here thinking about some of the issues, what comes to mind is, is what I normally say. Unaddressed issues in the home spill out into the streets, into the schools, into the malls. We all have a role in this. We absolutely have to step in. Sheriff said it, it's public safety. As law enforcement, we secure the hope and well-being of our community. And we need help in doing so. And the last thing I want to say, <coughs> let's keep our school system in our prayers. Our kids, our teachers, our faculty are saying things they should be saying. So again, maybe you can go back to my quotes from last time. I ask the community, stand together, start by taking care of home first, and coming together to help keep our community. Ultimately, there has to be some responsibility in the home. There has to be. Parents need to instill in their kids the absolute necessity to treat their teachers with respect and behave in the classroom. And parents need to instill in their children the need to respect other children in their classrooms. It has to start at home. It has to. And finally, the overwhelming majority of the kids in the Winston-Salem Forsyth County School System go to school every single day to learn and to get an education. That's what they do. It's our job up here to draw the clear line in the sand and let everybody know in this community 
we are going to protect our teachers and we're going to protect the students out here. We're going to protect them. And we're going to continue to work and support our superintendent because she works very hard at her job and she needs our support too. Now, I know that you're going to have questions about the incident itself from yesterday. I understand that. But because this process is still in juvenile court, you will not have the student's name, you will not have any more information or details about it, as we are held to a different standard and we cannot release that information. If you have general information or general questions regarding what we've talked about today, any of the three of us are happy to try and respond. But please understand our limitations as the law doesn't allow us to publicly talk about uh, some of that, some of the privacy uh, issues. Yes, ma'am. Um, Sheriff, I have a question for you. I was out there um, at Parkland earlier this afternoon and saw a lot of uniformed officers going into the building and we were told that another incident happened this morning and they were providing you information on what happened today. Again, dealing with juvenile. Uh, I can just tell you that uh, that was a disturbing disturbing uh, That's what I can say. Yes, ma'am. I know you mentioned looking at numbers earlier today. Are you able to tell us what do the numbers say about them and what they need to improve? Yeah, I'm able to give those numbers. Yeah, those numbers, uh, you just want me to read them to you? Well, uh, since school started in August, we have had 733 fights of phrase, simple assaults, aggravated assault, sexual assault. We have uh, retained 92 weapons uh, from the schools, 70 knives, 14 other weapons, including stun guns, brass knuckles, and coupons and pepper spray. Uh, as relates to, uh, we've had three handguns found on school property, um, stun gun, Anticipate any further charger charges, and in particular, when the superintendent spoke this morning, she mentioned that the juvenile got the gun from his house, and was wondering if that's a situation where there could be uh, improper illicit gun type of type of charge coming. That's the district attorney's question. I, I understand the question. Uh, however, it's not something we can talk about right now. And as the case initially has to proceed through the proper channels uh, in the juvenile arena, uh, then we'll see where we are when we come out the other side. Can you tell us how the gun got into school? Were there the uh, scanners were used or magnetometers or anything that was in place to prevent that? No, sir. Uh, there were no magnetometers in place. Other scanners? No, sir. Can you give us an idea of how in the world the gun got inside the school? Uh, I can't give you the particulars, but I would just assume guns don't have legs, so uh, someone had to carry it. That's what I would assume. Could you give us a description of a handgun, a ghost gun, uh, what kind of what kind of gun? Uh, all I tell it. All I can tell you was it was a real gun. It fires bullets. It fires bullets. Sheriff, you said. Um, we've got to realize we have an issue. Do you think the issue is community or the school? The no, so, so here's what I would tell you. The, the school is not the issue. Anything that, that manif anything that happens in our community will manifest in our school because that is the common place where they uh, come to for learning. So any issue that takes place in the community, it'll surface in the school. What I'm saying is that we've got to give the school what it needs to deal with the issues that manifest, originate from the community. You know, it, it's not fair for me or for you or for this community to say, okay, well, the school system has got to teach, educate, referee, decide, all of these things. We as a community have got to give the school system what they need to deal with the problem. If the school system do, they do, they do their job. What I'm saying is with, 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 with metal detectors and what I'm saying with other resources that are needed, 
those are issues that deal with funding, 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 funding. And as a community, we've got to give Ms. McManus and her staff what they need to secure our schools. That's what I'm saying. Do you think the fact that um, the number of handguns that have been confiscated this year is down compared to previous years? Do you think that's a result of the metal detection use that, that, that has been employed? I'll give you my personal opinion, okay? I'm entitled to an opinion. You can't, you can't, if you're gonna deal with a problem, you can't periodically deal with it. You gotta deal with it consistently. In other words, we've gotta have metal detectors every day. As a security expert, been in this game for 40 years, what I'm telling you is that we have a gun problem not only just here, but in, in America. And if we have a gun problem in America and a gun problem in our community, then it would seem to me that you have to put some metrics and some things in place to deal with that. And the only thing you can put in place to deal with that is metal detectors and personnel, which calls for funding. Okay? And I know there's a perception out there where we don't want to make our schools look a certain way we don't want to do this, but you have to look at the greater good. I don't like paying insurance every month. I don't, car insurance, I don't. I pay it in the event I have an accident, my cars are covered. I haven't had a car accident in my car ever. One of my personal wheels, I had to knock on wood for that, right? But what I'm saying is, they made a ton of money off of me, all state, every month. All I'm saying is that we've got to put that same kind of insurance in our schools, the same resources, regardless of what it costs. We have to print the money, we have to budget, we have to raise taxes. I don't even care. I'm, I'll be the first to say, raise my tax. Whatever it takes to give Ms. McManus and her staff what they need, we've got to do it. I'm a product of the school system, the public school system. I am a product of the public school system. My children are with the exception of two, are products of the public school system. The school, the kids that are going to school, it's a different world out there now. We all can agree with that. They have a little bit of age on us. We all can agree with that. The days that we went to school, you never heard nobody bringing a gun to school. Guns are common as a bottle of water now. You read the papers every day. You, 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 you supply the news. So it's not about that. This is a this is a holistic issue, and we have to address it from that perspective. Sheriff, are there are there I know they're used randomly, but are there metal detectors at every school, or are there just a, a few of them and they rotate between schools? That would be a Jonathan Wilson or the schools. Just a question. I don't know if they right. have, what the school system has in terms of I don't know if every school has. And, be out of my and we've been talking about funding. Do you know how much it would cost to put metal detectors in every school? Has that, has that those numbers been crunched? I haven't crunched them. Okay. Again, I contract with the school system. What I'm saying is, I see the problem. I'm telling you, telling you what is needed to curb this problem and fix the problem. Just from looking at it, I know it's going to cost people to manage. You can't expect the teachers and the staff to teach and manage the, the metal techs. You can't do that. That's not fair. They're not trained to do that. That's why I said if we need to contract with GoPro, uh, the people that manage the courthouse across the street, and other companies that, that, that assist in the windings. You know, every time you go to Wake Forest game, they have uh, Rhino. You can contract with several people, Rhino, GoPro, whoever, to man the metal detectors, and that costs money. Sure, there, there are parents and, and students who are uh, afraid to go to school at Parkland right now, and I'm wondering what you would say to those parents and students. What I would say to those parents and students, that the Passaic County Sheriff's Office, the Winston Police Department, the District Attorney, has a zero tolerance. We're doing everything earthly possible even to the point we're sending extra resources out there. We, they will be there from, they were there today until the end of the school year. That I'm gonna give them. 
As far as and I'm going to swallow the call still. As far as parking is concerned, um, how many incidents have y'all responded to this school year alone at that high school? 69. Sure, if I understand that there was limited reaction when this happened to the people around this incident, can you comment on that as maybe it was muffled, perhaps they thought it was a door that slammed, can you, can you comment on that at all? I can't because if I comment on that then I'm talking about the investigation. You said there was an SRO nearby, that maybe they were in a different part of the school? If I comment on that I'll be going down that slippery slope. I don't know if you know this or not, but is Parkland High School like your most visited school for responding to calls? Here's what I'm going to say about that, right? I'm going to reserve comment on that because I don't believe in stereotyping a school. I don't believe in saying one school is this or one school is that. And honestly, I don't know the answer to that question. I'd have to research. Do you have a number for how many calls you've responded to in your high schools in your county? Well, as I said, thus far, there have been 733 assaults, fights, affrays, simple assaults, aggravated assault, sexual assaults. That's the schools that we secure. Okay. It doesn't include East Forsyth and the schools that Kernersville secure. That's just what the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office keeps record and data on. Sure, if the response. Uh, yeah, two more questions. The disturbance that you responded to today, can you say what that was with or without weapons? What I can tell you is that, as far as I know, it was a disturbance. Uh, altercation is a better word. That's all I can say about that. I appreciate you all. Uh, Mr. Neal, yes. So in, in wrapping this up, you know, we understand that the community, we all have kids that attend our schools or their neighborhood schools. Um, and so we understand the interest in this, and that's why we felt it was important for us to come out here uh, as a unified, unified front uh, and set, tell our parents out there, tell our teachers out there, and tell the kids out there that we're not going to tolerate this kind of behavior. We're not going to tolerate nonsense at our schools. Line is drawn in the sand. We are united. We are going to do what we need to do to be sure that teachers feel safe, the students feel safe, and the parents, when they say goodbye to their kids in the morning, they feel safe, same school as well. Thank you all.